we want to be able to handle people who are looking for something very specific, like an exactly a, you know, three and a third inch drill center. Mm -hmm. And we want, and the dull satin nickel finish. And at the same time, be able to serve, help those who just want, no, I want like a, between a three and a four inch pole and I want it to be a nickel and I don't really, I don't need anything specific. We want to be able to help both of those. So it's, we try to make our search handle both, both aspects of all of the specific needs and also those general needs. Right. So that, you know, handling a lot, a lot of data is one thing we've put a big focus on in building the, in building the website. How can we be really good at helping people find their products? You know, with starting with a catalog of 50,000 products, my goal was how can I make, make it so that somebody can click as little as possible until they find the product they want. What does that journey look like? Because I can imagine, like, I mean, personally looking at this, I mean, I've had instances where I've had an old cupboard that I wanted to maybe replace the doorknob on. I would see myself coming, do a, being, doing a bit of a search and maybe filtering it down to, I don't know, 50 potential knobs. And I might probably want to give you a call. Is that what your typical flow looks like where the website sort of does that initial filter and then still people come to you? Or do you have a pretty good mix of people who just buy everything on the site and then another percentage of people who always have to call. What does that, what does that look like? Definitely a high percentage of people just go and buy, buy things on the site with never getting in touch with us. Okay. Interesting. Are, are there usually repeats or maybe like smaller orders and then the bigger ones always call you? I would not say there's a huge pattern in terms of the, the size of the order and their likelihood to call. They're a really, really big order. They're likely to be in touch. Our main repeat orders come in two categories. One, when somebody is getting a sample and then following right. up with a bigger order. So again, they need the 40 items, but they want to buy three, make sure that they, the item they're, buy, they're choosing really fits their needs, and then they follow up with a second order. And then these products are guaranteed for life, so we're never hearing from this person again. You know, unless they move houses or something, we're not expecting any repeat business. And then there's the repeat business from our, our trade professionals, people who are in this professionally, they flip apartments for a living. Right. And they're, they're constantly buying, buying places and fixing them up, selling them and then starting again. So that person might do four houses a year and they might come back to us over and over again. What you said earlier sounds like a really good diagnostic of why this a faceted search is working really well because if for instance with all of this you still had a lot of people calling you then that's a sign that the website isn't really giving them exactly what they need so all your trial and error seems to have worked pretty well <laughs> it's just different search styles and i think that's a, a really important thing to be to be noting there's not a way that everybody likes to to search for things some people love having someone hold their hands and take them through and work out a design specifically for them they love sending pictures of their kitchen and saying what knobs would go well with this. Mm -hmm. Others, the last thing they want to do is get on the phone with somebody. They want a process that gives them as little human interaction as possible. They want to take themselves through it. They want to spend as little time shopping as possible. And if they can get, if I can get them to their product, ideal product in five clicks and a competitor takes them eight clicks, then they'd rather be on my site than on theirs. Absolutely. Um, is, I, I think it's also very important to highlight, you, you've already done this, that all of these strategies make sense when you've got a huge product catalog. I mean, if you've got 10 products to sell, then uh, maybe this kind of search doesn't make any sense. But so for people who got large catalogs, are there anything, is there anything else that you found that works really well? Obviously, search is a really big part of it, but um, is there anything else that you, you think is worth sharing? So we didn't go into the actual search bar itself. That okay. was a a big thing to do. So you can also start not with a category, but with a search. And that's a great way. You definitely want to have good search. You want to have a good way to drill down. One thing we did is we did a lot in terms of categorizing our products. So every manufacturer had their own list of categories and, their, and such. And we decided to go through and say, you know what, what are some of these, what are some of these styles? You know, which ones are modern, contemporary, transitional, uptown and lower, like th these are not pieces of information that came from the, from the vendor. They didn't tell us necessarily which ones are French country, which ones are Victorian, 
because we're dealing with so many manufacturers. We probably carry 30, 40 manufacturers. So we, one thing we would do is we would go and we would add data to what we had from our manufacturers and we would assign styles to the different pieces. So that gives people a different way of, of searching.